Let the team at Black Hills Information Security test your defenses. With over 10 years of experience in penetration testing, red teaming, and threat hunting, the testers at Black Hills will help you find the holes in your security before the bad guys do. The team at Black Hills cares about educating and sharing their knowledge by creating countless blogs, open source tools, and webcasts for you to learn more about the tradecraft of pen testing and red teaming. Visit securityweekly.com forward slash BHIS to join their mailing list and view the latest blogs and webcasts from Black Hills Information Security. Welcome back to Enterprise Security Weekly. I am your host, Matt Alderman, joined by Lee Neely. Security teams need network data to threat hunt and resolve incidents, but find that PCAP is often too much data and NetFlow isn't enough. CoreLite has, was founded by the creators of Zeek Bro, and its sensors provide just the right amount of data, transforming raw traffic into comprehensive logs, extracted files, and custom insights. So analysts can make fast sense of traffic and move at the speed of attack. To find out why Corelight is your next best move in security, visit securityweekly.com forward slash Corelight. Also, register for our upcoming webcast with uh, Viavi this afternoon, if, if you get this in time. ISC Squared and Security Weekly's Evaluating Security Vendors Without Losing Your Mind by going to securityweekly.com forward slash webcasts. If you have missed any of our previously recorded webcasts, please visit our on-demand library at securityweekly.com forward slash on-demand. All right, let's get to our interview. Craig Taylor has been in cybersecurity for more than two decades. Craig started out working for a firewall vendor, moved to a multinational web hosting service provider, CSC, before stints at Vistaprint and Chase Payment Tech. For the last five years, he's been building CyberHoot.com, an open LMS system that helps SMBs build and automate their cybersecurity program directly to SMBs as well as through VARs. Craig, welcome to Enterprise Security Weekly. Thanks very much, Matt. Happy to be here. So you and I spoke a, a couple weeks back, and we were talking about security awareness and some of the challenges with security awareness. And that's how I got to understand kind of what you guys are doing at CyberHoot. So let's start with some of the challenges around security awareness, building out a security program, especially with SMBs who may not have some of the resources that some of the larger enterprises do. Yeah, I appreciate that question, Matt. It's, a, it's an appropriate one for the small to medium-sized business market, the mid-enterprise and smaller. What I find when I go in and I consult with these SMBs is that they're overwhelmed with choices. Technology silver bullets are put out to them in emails every day, and they're missing out on the most critical and simple things they can do to solve some of their biggest risks. So you might hear in an SMB that you need a very complicated product that is a network intrusion detection device or um, um, a, an IDS or a uh, scanning multiple scans of your website and your internal network. And all these things are great technology solutions. They have their place. But if you're not training your employees on how to spot a phishing attack, if you're not providing them with a password manager that can help them keep unique, strong, and long passwords for each site they visit, then you're at risk for some of the biggest breaches that are most commonly made by hackers today with a phishing email or a compromised password that's reused on your VPN or your email account. Yeah, we've seen in the news over the past couple of weeks uh, these ransomware attacks at, at different cities that you know that are that are now susceptible because they don't have some of these basic uh, capabilities in place. How does that correlate into where, as as an SMB, where should they start? Because there's a lot of things they can do. But how do you start to guide them down a path of, all right, I'm, I'm starting down the security path. Where should I start? Uh, where, where do you guide your uh, clients? So I guide my clients to, at a very basic minimum, you need to have some awareness training in your employees. Let's step back for a moment, Matt, and look at the employees that SMBs are hiring today. These might be... Uh, individuals that are right fresh out of college or high school, or maybe they've had a stint at another small to medium sized business. But in all cases, um, universities, you can graduate today from MIT and not have a single minute 
of training in cybersecurity. You would not, you, you know, my children, your children are getting uh, anti-bullying training in, in uh, school. They're learning about the importance of not doing things like sexting and stuff like that. But, and yet they're given accounts for email. They're given accounts to log into their learning systems at, at these schools. They're not taught how to create a password. They're not taught how to recognize a phishing attack. And they're expected to use a computer in any job they get today. So my first line of defense at any of these companies is to immediately put them into a training program because most of their employees outside of Fortune 1000 or Fortune 5000 have not had enough training on spotting a phishing attack or uh, understanding why they need to use long and strong passwords or a password manager. So we get them right into a training program because that adds the most value and prevents the most egregious um, compromises that I'm seeing across the board in my small to medium-sized business customer base. So training has its goods and its bads. Um, one of the, I, I think one of the criticisms of training is, okay, so I train them. Now we're done. Um, now what, right? Because they went through the training, they passed the exam, but that's not enough. Is it? Because the, the things constantly change in our environment. The attacks might get a little more sophisticated. If you're not doing some level of reinforcement, don't we mm -hmm. as humans just after a while, just forget and just go back to our old way. So how do you address aspects of this constant reinforcement or this constant uh, ongoing training mechanism to make sure we don't forget about this stuff in our day-to-day -day jobs because it's easy for us to kind of forget. You're absolutely right. Um, my passion in life is education. In fact, once upon a time, I was enrolled in teacher's college to become a teacher. I love teaching people about things. Now I'm marrying my two loves in life, uh, cybersecurity on the one hand and training and education on the other through the company I founded, Cyberhoot. Um, what I find is that to answer your question, you need to be uh, sending reminders and additional uh, topics to your employees month over month. Um, I'll give you an example. We were uh, part of a response at the city of Portsmouth and they've actually approved me uh, giving the, um, the, their name out in this interview because of the success of their program. A year ago, we were brought in to help them bolster their cybersecurity program because they had the sense, maybe the foresight, uh, to see that cities and towns and municipalities were, were being attacked with increasing frequency and success. We all have heard about the city in Florida that paid a $600,000 ransom. Well, we implemented a training and awareness program that sent out really small five-minute videos once a month for the past year. And to quote Alan uh, Brady, who's their uh, IT director over at the city, he's received at least a dozen emails from staff that might not otherwise have recognized a phishing attack. And instead of them clicking on that phishing attack link, they've sent it to Alan to say, hey, look at me. I've found a phishing attack in my inbox. I'm sending it to you because I didn't click on it. So there's the repetition um, I find people's attention spans with some solutions out there are, are shorter than, than the training that's assigned to them. Sometimes you need to hit them more frequently, but with shorter videos. So most of the solutions on the market are moving to a five-minute sort of micro training uh, event. Uh, we've been that way since the beginning uh, with five-minute videos on a particular topic. And then you have to make them interesting as well because there's a cultural shift that occurs over time, Matt, where employees start talking with one another. Uh, they start saying, yeah, I got a phishing attack or I, I had this, this alert come into my inbox. Is it a fish? Do you think, what do you think? So it's repetition mostly. Yeah. And I think that's the interesting part is how to craft these programs, right? Is we do have short attention spans as humans. Uh, and if you bring in a brand new employee, they're not going to, they may not want to sit through, you know, a day's worth of training and they're like, oh, you know, their eyes are going to roll over in their head and, you know, they'll get through it, but then they'll be off. And, and so from a tracking perspective in, in how you build these programs, are, are, do you recommend, uh, any upfront time or is it like, look, it's just every month we're going to do five minutes and just kind of spread it out. And then I would imagine you, you have to think about 
adding additional topics or mixing it up for ongoing years if you're going to continue to evolve that, that training program. Right. So I heard two questions there, Matt. One is, how do you start the program for a new employee? And secondly, how do you keep it interesting in year two? Both of those are great questions because, you know, we spend a lot of time at CyberHoot and thinking about how do we make the program effective? Because at the end of the day, we want to avoid a costly breach at one of the SMBs that are using our product. So, uh, in the beginning, when you sign up at, at CyberHoot for, um, a program, it's really simple click and, and assignment of the 12 monthly videos, five minutes each mid video comes out the first of the month typically, and the employees will begin their training program from ground zero, getting the introductory video that basically sets the landscape for the subsequent videos you're going to receive, everything from passwords, password managers, passphrases to What's dangerous about USB keys, right? If you find one in the parking lot, don't put it in your computer. Give it to your IT director. We go over all of these different topics throughout the course of a year. In year two, we like to remind the users with another round of some of the more critical topics, but with new videos and new questions around phishing, around passwords and password managers. Um, in fact, today we've added some integration into CyberHoot that does a dark web search for compromised data. So today, starting today in CyberHoot, if you're an employee at a company using CyberHoot training, you can get a report that shows how many times your personal or your work email was compromised in the dark web. If you go back, you know, LinkedIn was breached, Yahoo was breached, Dropbox was breached. All of those are there. And moving forward, you'll get a, a, a weekly response to you that keeps it fresh uh, in terms of, oh, there's been a new breach of one of my accounts. Here, I got to go change that password. So keeping it fresh, keeping it new, and keeping it quick are some of the keys to success that we have. Um, does that answer your question, Matt? Of course. Lee, I don't want to consume this whole interview either, I, so I want to give you a chance to come in here. No problem. I actually had 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 two questions. One one was a little more esoteric. Uh, the one as I was thinking, I was going to wondering, are you providing a tracking mechanism so we can make sure that that Matt has completed his monthly training, or and and if he doesn't, what's the escalation path? That was my first question. My more esoteric question is, when you're training people on detecting phishing and stuff. Is there a value to making sure the company implements a reporting mechanism? You know, the, the so you think you got a fish, what do you do with it? Or am I just, is that mm -hmm. kind of incredibly obvious? Uh, great question. So first one is uh, one of the differentiators, I think, from my experience looking at other companies on the market and what CyberHoot does. When you upload your user base into our product, you also have to provide the manager and the HR representative for each employee. And the reason for that is there's a succession of reminder notifications that go out and reports that go out to the managers of the company doing the training. So it's kind of unique to CyberHoot. So you could load in, you know, 100 users and five, they report up to five or let's say 10 managers. And the first email will go out to all 100 users that you have some training to take. And at whatever frequency you set, it could be seven days or 14 days later, if that user hasn't done their training, they get a reminder email. And that reminder email lets them know that you have until this deadline to do the training. And by the way, the next reminder will go to you and your manager. And so we're breeding a culture of managers keeping tabs on employees to say, have you done your training? We're allowing after the deadline for an escalation email to go out to HR to say, you know, despite three or four attempts to reach out to this employee, they haven't done their training. You might want to reach out to them and take a look at maybe they're on maternity leave. Maybe they're on jury duty and they're out for an extended period of time, which would explain the lack of compliance. Um, all administrators at the client site have a dashboard, right, that they can log into. And we sort of 
created some visual representations in our cyber owl. His name is Al that uh, represent when you're doing well in your company. So if you're above 80%, you get this really uh, anthropomorphic owl that's happy and celebratory. If you're at 50 to 80%, he's sort of indescript. He's not happy. He's not sad. Anything below 50%, he's downright disappointed and his cap is off, things like that. So we try to gamify it a little bit. We also try to make it uh, very uh, responsive for those managers. They can get a report emailed to them uh, once a month of the status of their employees so they can do some follow-up as well. All designed to create a culture of awareness and compliance. Do you find that over time the escalations drive more, more compliance, I guess, because they know that it ultimately will go to HR? Or is it... And in fact, it does. That's a, that's a great question. It does um, sort of improve compliance up to a point. You know, when you get near the top of any of these SMBs, sometimes the king of the castle, the, the owner of the company, I do find that there's no escalation that will work with them sometimes other than saying, you know, are you willing to put the, the risk of your company, uh, your company at risk rather, uh, by clicking on a phishing attack or by having your email account compromised and then someone trying to work with your finance person to wire 10, 20, 50, a hundred thousand dollars off to a foreign place, a hacker somewhere on the internet. I myself have been a part of three or four in, in, in escalations on wire fraud over the last year where it was a, a, just a business email compromise and the hacker monitored the communications and inserted themselves right at the perfect time to say, well, our bank's under audit. We need to wire the money to this new account. Please proceed. And they were actually in the account of the decision maker at that firm or at the other company. And so money was wired to never be returned. And it's, it can be devastating for these SMBs, which is why you know, I'm trying to focus my energies and, and cyber hoot strictly on that small to medium sized business marketplace because they're so often forgotten by the big players in the space who want to sign 5,000 accounts at a time. But, you know, the bulk, bulk of businesses in the United States are all SMBs, right? They need our help. So one of the interesting things I found working with small businesses is, is that there, a lot of their input comes from calling Bob down the street who knows how to, who answers questions and they trust. How do you inject yourself into that communication as being a, 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 a trusted advisor or a, you know, a, a decent resource that they can go to and not just Bob? So that's a great question as well. I mean, I love these questions today because they're hitting on all of the critical uh, questions to be asked. If you're a business owner of an SMB and you got to deploy a tool uh, or technology to help educate your employees, a couple things come to mind about how we can insert ourselves, how cyber who, who can help in those situations. You know, in a, my research in trying to start CyberHoot, I looked at a number of other products on the market. And one of the things that the developers and I started off reading was Steve Jobs' book, um, his memo um, his, uh, uh, the story of his life. And he had a fanatical uh, approach to simplicity that we've built into CyberHoot. We, the developers and I have said, we do not want to have a single manual in our product because the, the market we're going after, the SMB space, whether it's direct or through resellers, doesn't have time to read a 400-page manual on how to operate something. So when they look to us to do some training, they ask questions like, well, how hard is it to set up? How do I know the messaging is correct? And that's why we do two things. We, we don't have a manual. We have wizards for setting all this stuff up. And we're leveraging, you know, a collective, the, the, the team that has built CyberHoot and the videos and the training have probably over 100 years of cybersecurity experience, which is hard to come by since it's relatively new field of 20, 25 years. So we're, we're really focusing in on quick topics that are of interest to the people that are being trained uh, simplicity in setup and administration, good reporting and compliance metrics that allow you to sort of automate the whole thing. And then, you know, the topics, when you sit down and listen to the topics, you really, you know, so many times people who have taken my training come to me and say, Craig, I didn't know what I didn't know. I wasn't aware of how these breaches that I hear about every day in the news were happening. 
Now I know it's phishing, it's passwords, it's joining Wi-Fi networks, it's plugging USB sticks in. And I get that in these little messages every month, and I love it. Um, I hope I'm answering your question. Is that is that getting to the core of the you, crux you, of your you actually you, you did really good. And as as you're um, describing what you're doing, um, one of my other roles in life is I'm a director at a local credit union, and we have a lot of required training. And they've been their training suppliers also been doing the micro training, which took a lot of getting used to because I'm used to you know big cyber courses that are you know multiple days or at least an hour. And uh, so that, I was wondering how you keep that fresh. And Mm -hmm. uh, because it seems like, you know, with five minutes, you've really got to hit, like, what do you want to say, the top of the news or the the most most relevant events, and you're going to wind up in an update cycle. Or is that a misperception on my part? No, you're, you're absolutely right. You need to be specific with each training and hone into a particular topic. So, for instance, we break out passwords in our training on passwords and how to create strong pass phrases from password managers, right? You'd think, oh, we should cover the whole gamut of passwords, pass phrases, password managers. But really, ultimately, you can't do that in five minutes with appropriate depth and and clarity of messaging. So we split it. And that allows us to start with an overview of passwords, password construction, pass phrases, why they matter. We point people to sites like Have I Been Pwned to see for themselves, has my account been breached? And then the second video that comes out a month later says, oh, now that you've learned about password construction and passphrases, let's tell you where to save these things so that you can make them all unique and independent of one another so that if Dropbox is breached or another company out there, some internet site is breached, you only have one place to change your password, not 50 and scratching your head trying to figure out where did I have that password? Uh, so that's a really key uh, to making these messages simple, short, and brief. We've all sit there. I've been in, you know, Fortune 1000 companies like you where I've had the one-hour training. And, you know, you click play on the video, you go away, you get a coffee, you come back, and you try and fake your way through the questions, right? And if you get enough a high enough score, you're done your training for that month. I don't think that works. It's not effective. It's not a good use of your time. And especially in SMBs where Almost every minute matters because they have five different hats on their head. Uh, it's important for us to be very efficient with the timing that training takes out of their day. And that's why we've really tried to focus on nothing more than five minutes, uh, visually in, in, in engaging, and then ask them some simple questions that at the end test the knowledge of the video without trying to trick them. Right? We're trying to just reinforce to the video watcher, what did they just see? Right, A long time ago in, in training, my educational days, it said, tell them what you're going to tell them, give them what you said you'd tell them, and then remind them what you just told them. And that three-time approach seems to stick and, and provide meaningful awareness in the individuals watching these videos. So now that you've got them trained, and it's not—it's really neat that your 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 training is progressive. It's not just the day we're talking about password manager. Next month we're going to talk about spam. The month after we're going to talk about not propping propping the back door open. You you've got a nice progression there. But what about um, the need to uh, facilitate reporting when somebody sees something odd? They don't just you know say oh that's odd and deleted or whatever. Is it, how important is it to make sure that they have an effective reporting mechanism to, to then follow up what they've been trained on? I, I think that's part of the educational uh, approach. I know that in some uh, tools you can get a plug-in for Outlook, which I, I ad- admire. I think that's a great solution where you can report a phishing email right from within your Outlook client. I think that's a great answer to the solution. Uh, and that's something we're looking at actively to have that plug in and then have it go to a particular uh, person within the organization. Most of the plugins, so for instance, we're partners at, at Neoscope. My other uh, time frame is as a chief information security officer for businesses throughout New England. And we are partners with Mimecast, and Mimecast has a plug in. But that plug in reports the spam message to Mindcast, not to the local admin. So there's a bit of a gap between what is being reported by your end users and the local administrator or the local IT director to know how many times their employees are being 
fished or targeted. So when we come out with that plugin, it will go to an individual in the client, you know, the client system administrator or the client uh, designate. <clears throat> Yeah, and that will cool. help reinforce aspects of the training because now if you see something malicious, you now have the ability to report on it. It'll end up with the right person in the organization who could actually do something about it. And then when that gets closed out, there's a reinforcement of, hey, great job. We, we you know, we, we shut this one down. Right. So, I mean, that that's also part of this awareness campaign. Yep. It, it's creating a culture of awareness throughout your organization and having, you know, you know, you're successful when people start reporting it back. As my friend Alan over at the city of Portsmouth said, he's starting to get emails there. He's been getting emails for the last year from employees saying, hey, I think this is phishing. And now they're saying, hey, this is a phishing attack. I wanted to let you know, Alan. I didn't click on it, right? So when you get that level of um, commitment and cultural shift and awareness, you're having a positive impact impact on that municipality, that city, that town. Um, before I forget, I just wanted to let folks know that for the month of July with CyberHoot, we're going to extend our 30-day trial to any city, town, or organization in New England to 60 days to try us out to see if it, it's a good fit for their organization. Um, I, I want to make sure that people understand they can try before they buy to get a sense of, does this five-minute microburst training work for you? So if you're a city, town, or business that isn't doing training today, you need to start is my primary message. Pick a tool, technology, hope it's CyberHoop. But if not, that's okay. You need to do it somehow with someone. Um, but we're going to try and extend that, double that training in the month of July for any client that wants to sign up either direct or through one of our resellers. And where would they find that information? Where should they go? Just cyberhoot.com? Yes, yeah, cyberhoot.com is a great resource for signing up. There's a couple of videos there that outline the merits and demerits of the, well, it's mostly merits of training uh, your employees. There's a video for resellers that might want to sign up and resell this to their clients. Um, just some anecdotal evidence here at, at Neoscope, where, which is one of our primary resellers in the New England region, uh, they have a 99% renewal rate on their client base that has adopted CyberHoot. So not every client at Neoscope is on CyberHoot, but of the ones that are, they re-sign year after year with the MSP services 99% of the time. There's fewer cost of supporting them because you know, it's flat rate IT today for most MSPs, and they charge a flat rate. So if there's fewer security incidents, it costs less to support. The clients are happier, more secure, more confident in both personally and professionally because they've been trained on these topics. Uh, but yes, to your original point, go to cyberhoot.com and either sign up direct because we're allowing companies to sign up direct or sign up uh, to become a reseller. We'd love to have more resellers get the benefits to their clients of this security or cybersecurity as a differentiator. Um, that's where you can go. There's also a social blog where you can look at articles that we talk about all these different breaches. I wrote an article recently about something called domino breaches, which we probably don't have time to talk about, but there's lots of great information on the blog there as well that you can uh, look at and read through. Great. Lee, do you have any additional questions for Craig while we have him? I had one last question, and I hope it's, I don't intend it to be a long one. You know, I'm thinking as a, the small, our small business friends in New England are, are saying, awesome, let's go sign up for a CyberHoot free trial. What's, what's the time between saying, hell yeah, I want to do it, and actually having a working program? How involved is that? Is that a five-minute thing? Is that a five-day thing? What, what, how, how big a deal is that to get, get, get going? <laughs> That's my favorite question uh, because we've built it to be so simple and so automated. You can be up and running in less than an hour once you click go. Um, you would, there's obviously some import of your user base either from an Active Directory export to get it in, but to assign the training, to create the groups, to do the administration, I personally am so good at it, I can do you in 15 minutes. But I think I budget about 45 minutes to read some of the bubbles that say, oh, I want to be able to email. I want my employees the ability to email a policy to themselves once they sign off. Because 
this is cybersecurity in a box. It's not, uh, it allows you to govern your employees with their with policies. It provides templates for that. And it is a training library that you can set up literally within minutes. So it's, it's very quick to get a meaningful program in place and kicked off. That's great. Craig, thank you so much for joining us on Enterprise Security Weekly. My pleasure. Thanks, Matt. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. We'll see you next week on Enterprise Security Weekly.